Good morning, <clears throat> and I did my best. I did my best to put together a how-to video on this and merge them together into a seamless professional production, but I still have a lot to learn using my Movie Maker app on this phone <clears throat> to stick videos together. What I am going to do is I am going to walk you through the utter simplicity of putting rawhide wrappings over the tips of I would say almost any bow. You could do it just for fun. <clears throat> As with sinew backing, as with sinew backing, I, I totally believe that wrapping the tips with rawhide is a very simple technique <clears throat> that's almost foolproof and it's one that you should master. Get over the inertia of thinking, oh, that's complex, that, that takes technique, that takes years of practice. A lot of this stuff does not. And so even if you're going to take some old bow and just experiment, do it. Just try it. Just go ahead. If you don't like it, you can always sand it off. Um, but I, I, I challenge you to do that, and I bet you, I bet you that you're going to be successful in it. Because the material involved rawhide is as say generous with its <clears throat> success as sinew backing demystify it demystify it enough of that now because i <laughs> yeah doing video work and, and editing to me is like a million times harder than making a bow so in that case i tried and i didn't do well but i can still live as a good human being not knowing how to edit it does not bother me the materials, a bow, rawhide, and this is a trimming from the backing that I put on my paddle bows. And I save it, you know, it's a nice material. And the other thing is, uh, I, I suppose you could use tight bond, you know, or another um, carpenter cement. I like hide glue. I like hide glue. So let's first talk about the hide glue. The, the percentage of hide glue to water the um, thickness of it, variable. It's variable. I wind up, this is my main little glue pot, sealed, kept in a refrigerator. If I'm gonna go a long period of time, I keep it in the freezer. <clears throat> but this is a pretty stiff mix. It will gel at room temperature. This is the sinew backing mix that I use. And so I simply just take, I took my Pine Hollow Longbow mug and took a little butter knife and just scraped some off and put it in warm water and I built up the stickiness, the, the viscosity of my hide glue. So if I put my fingers in it and let it dry, it's tacky. However, it's not thick enough that it gels at room temperature. It's not necessary to have that thick, thick of a glue in here. Um, you just want it so you put your fingers in there and you'll see tackiness but it will stay ungelled at room temperature. This has been in the freezer, or refrigerator, pardon me, so it is gelled. But you need to have some hide glue in your water or it won't work well. The second component, and there's a little bit of work that goes on that. Even if you buy your rawhide strips at Pine Holler Longbow, you still need to prepare it for um, wrapping your tips. And so, 80 grit sandpaper, and I've got choices. I have either a hard wooden sanding block or I've got this I bought it just you know hardware store this is a sanding block in its own right but it's foamy and so I use this in conjunction with sandpaper to be a flexible sanding block and the reason I really prefer a flexible sanding block and it doesn't you know it's six and one half dozen of, of another so if, you know I could use a hard one I could use this flexible sanding block doesn't matter and what I do is simply not a hard technique flipping it over sanding it and this is somewhat thick so it'll take a while just fast forward to a material that is actually thin enough that if you put it over say a piece of typewritten um, paper you can read it it needs to be almost a little beyond the thickness of squirrel rawhide it doesn't need to be that thick because what this does 
is on, in the case of a, a, a sinew back ball that has a wrapping and then you put your string grooves in there, it just needs to be able to cushion the string if you use a sinew string and kind of tie together all those loose ends of sinew um, that you created when you sanded and, and worked the, the string grooves into your ball. You can also see that it has quite a complex nature to this. This is a bent tab um, tip ball. And again, I might have mentioned this prior to this, the junction, the, um, the joint for that bent tab is actually outside of where the string connects to the main part of the bow. So that bent tab is not under that much pressure. If you do a bad job of stringing it, maybe you'll stress it out, but this is incredibly strong because I've got the joint to tip it up and the sinew runs over and around and back and that adds a lot of rigidity and strength. And so, my friends, I have my rawhide, which has been, this hasn't been, this is fresh, you know, right off the strip, um, thin to the point where it can bend around that nicely but still no holes in it. You just want to thin this. Thin this until it screams. <laughs> you take it then, and I cut this in two pieces. One for each tip, stuck it in my hide glue mug, and just let it sit for about an hour. Because this is so thin, it doesn't take a long time for it to get flexibility. I'm gonna have to des destruct this. I'm gonna have to like work backwards work backwards. This is what it looks like after you get it all set up and ready to dry because I already have put the um, rawhide on here. You can see I've got string winding on there and then left a gap for this string. It's not, it, well it's a bow string for a, a paddle bow. But what I did was I arranged my knot in a way that it'll draw that rawhide into the string grooves it'll dry and when it's when it's dried there won't be any gaps between the rawhide and the string grooves <clears throat> I took this is what I did you're just gonna have to like yeah close your eyes you can't watch the video but pretend you're closing your eyes there's a lot of like simulation here <clears throat> took my strip I cut in half um, larger than what I need needed and um, put it around there and then using a pencil or my fingernails as a as a scriber I fit it around there it doesn't go over the end it just comes right up to the end trimmed it so I can like wrap that around there and it's flexible and it's wet in the sun so I have like an overlap and it's almost impossible to see the overlap here but an overlap on the belly side all the way up then I took my string, as you saw here, and keeping in mind orientation of the overlap. <clears throat> Let's say the overlap is like this. This side goes over this side. I wrapped my strings in a direction so it actually pulls that overlap over using three hands. This is a three-hand operation. <clears throat> wrapped it beginning at the bow, not just at the rawhide, because I want that seam right there um, to be tied down. Started wrapping it, wrapping it, wrapping it, and left a little left a little gap there for my string afterwards after I had the string on here and then jimmied it up with this block to add tension <clears throat> then I went back with the string and then filled in the gaps because I want to make sure that like it's stuck down there now how long I let this dry before I undid it wasn't as long as rawhide backing because again these are thin uh, they it dry really fast so like 12 hours is enough but you know let things dry longer than you think so overnight full day doesn't have an, any negative consequences on it let me untie this so then I can yap a little bit about what the finished stuff looks like I'm just reversing my process I'm undoing this the knots I use on this are not critical as long as they fully encapsulate fully wind around those string grooves because if you don't have any gaps there you've been successful and so I increase my chances of this thing the rawhide getting sucked getting pushed 
into the grooves fully and then being able to dry is enhanced if you do a good wrapping job. And Tim, yep, unfortunately there is some ro road noise here because I'm in the parking lot and the road which our drive comes off is right there but luckily you know you get onto the trails it disappears because on the other side of the preserve is um, Little Traverse Bay. In the winter it's great because a lot of the people that stay here in the summer are gone and snow muffles no it's just dead quiet here this is what i have shed my string let's see here and that is the rawhide wrapping and you can see that the tips are somewhat complex there's a lot of curvies and a, string grooves a lot of stuff going on in there and the rawhide is a marvelous material it shrinks down and it fits it in no. You might be asking, you know, what is the glue that you use? How do you do the glue? That's the simplest part. I had my thinned mixture of hide glue. Liquid at room temperature, the same stuff that I pulled my strips out of. To size it, I just dip the tips in there shake it off so it doesn't like run down the belly dip the other tip in let it sit a bit and second time it is now sized it is now ready to go I can put my glue away my strips that have been soaking in the hide glue they're ready to go it's nice and tacky you might think well because you dipped or soaked these in hide glue if you're touching the tips you're gonna get sticky fingers well it's no different than the backing you're not gonna hold the backing with sweaty hands you're probably not going to go like this with sweaty hands and wait for those um, tips to like stick to your hand. It doesn't work that way. When you're doing wraps on the handle, I would not soak it in the hide glue mixture and, and have glue encapsulated, literally encapsulated into your strips for your handle because we're holding this. We're not holding this. You could probably go back and grease it. You're, use uh, the world's greatest um, floor finish, whatever you use. The, the the thrust of this or the thrust of this discussion is that you're not going to just sit here and hold this with sweaty hands. So it doesn't matter that you soak this in, in high glue. I don't add any more glue to the system. I'm not going to say I'm going to prepare to high glue, so I'm going to put glue on this and then put glue on this. Not necessary because there's glue everywhere and this is damp. All I did was take these out, trim them um, after I dipped my tips, and there's plenty of glue, plenty of glue to go around. No one's going to left, be left glueless. That'll work. Wrap it. If it was in the case of this, where this is on top, I'd wrap it this way to like cinch that down. And then go back, tie knots in here. You don't have to have it braced. You just have to have tension. So tie your knots on both sides. Lift the string up and then set it on your block and just let it sit. And that is it. That is the extent of it. Now... <clears throat> On this, it kind of looks like a fingernail. For some reason, you know, no big deal. It's lifted above here a little bit. And this is the only, like, after action, after action fiddling I'm going to do with this. I'm going to take probably the hard block, because I want to have more control. Do, 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 do. And I'm just going to very thin so this is going to work fast and I'm not going to put so much pressure on it that it's going to eat away at the sinew because the sinew goes over the end voila I just eliminated it it's all the way down feathered in there in a time honored technique is well I probably will dip the whole thing and after it's done or else you can just Activate that, and because there's glue in there, the tip is done. The tip is done. It's going to cushion the string. It's going to hold all those loose bits of sinew because I wrapped the whole thing. And so when I sanded the grooves in there, there's just like a, a backing, like this orientation of sinew here. So they ended right there. It's going to tie those all down. Magnificent.
magnificent. And that's it. I apologize because I was not successful in editing, but if you just free your mind and accept that you can do this, and it's actually quite easy, the there, voila, and except the fact that this this uh, rawhide, just like the sinew, is going to help you out, it lives to be successful. And so even though you think you might not have had it bond, bonded down there and, and stuck and everything is perfect, when it dries, it's going to shrink around there and be beautiful. Now, notes on, on bows. You can see that this isn't, <clears throat> like in the books, incredibly reflexed. It's a short bow, and this is just my theory. It's also not incredibly wide. This is on the, the verge of not being a paddly bow. You know, some of them were really wide and going to be a lot thinner, and so you could get away with more reflex. Um, it's juniper, not you. And so, as I stated earlier, I'm not going to be a reflex monster and say, oh, I don't have like a thousand feet of reflex in here. It didn't turn out. This is perfectly um, fine for me. I'm happy with this. It has reflex. It'll maintain reflex, but it's not going to overstress itself. You don't get something for nothing. And by having a moderate amount of reflex over a huge amount of reflex, the chances are that this juniper, not you, this juniper and sinew back bow, it's going to enjoy a longer life. Because um, picture this, you have a very short bow. And the amount of stress placed on it just by bracing it with a decent brace height. Then compound that with a short bow, you know, a decent draw length. And so I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid of, of using this or, or passing along selling it because I didn't get too ambitious with this. It has enough. If it was a little wider, if it was you, then yes, you know, I'd go for greater reflex. But this is good. This is good. Now, a few notes. If you've worked with Juniper and seen you, there's something odd that happens. It doesn't happen on every bow, but it's relatively common with Juniper bows. And that is these longitudinal cracks that might form in the limbs. Um, it just happens. It just happens. And I believe I read something about that in the Boyer's Bible, traditional Boyer's Bibles, and somebody was talking about that. First of all, it's a mystery why it does that. Is it adding a lot of moisture when you sinew back and it does funny things? Or is the sinew actually like like trying to like curve or uncurve the belly of the bow and it kind of causes that separation there. But in any case, any case, it runs straight down the back. And you see this in Osage bows too. Sometimes they'll they have these cracks. Doesn't matter. If the crack ran like this, bad. If it ran down here and it went off to the side, not good. But as long as it's straight down the center, um, it's not going to affect the bow any. It's not going to affect the bow. So there we go. This has been sitting around for months and months. It's floor tillered right now. And so, and I say this to Emilio, it's ready to be finished off. Hopefully I answered some questions, but more. Hopefully I inspired you to grab these rawhide strips, sand them down. I mean, you made a bow. You can't tell me that this is beyond your technology. Uh, getting some hide glue. How thick? Just thick enough so it's tacky when your fingers dry, but not so thick that um, it gels at room temperature. And lastly, I guess, I don't want to tie you up too long, is it's not wasted. This is thinner than this stuff. All I need to do, unless I'm going to be doing a lot of rawhide um, tip wrapping here is I could just simply add more hide glue to this, get it to the same consistency of this, and then just use this to replace what you lose um, during the backing process. And so it's not wasted. It's not like, oh, this is too thin. You might not want to drink it, you know, to help your fingernails and give you a shiny coat and just throw it out, whatever. You can actually use this. Just add more of your um, powdered hide glue and then just add it to your glue pot. So there is no waste involved. I'm going to put a little saran wrap over this, um, just pop it in the freezer. 
it's all good. The plant section. Oh, sweet grass. I gathered it, gathered it the last time a little shorter than I normally do. I'll take my patch and then I'll take sticks and drive them in here, learn this from an elder, and then put a crisscross of string in there um, so it keeps it up and it doesn't allow it to fl flop over and then get dark in there and have it rot. I gathered it before I normally do. Usually I wait till it's 30 inches tall, um, but this is long enough for braiding or else just bundling and hanging for the smell of it. Beautiful stuff. Smells like vanilla. I originally bought my starch from the California Seed Company. You can't, if you find somebody on, on eBay or Amazon or internet in general that will sell sweet grass seeds, don't. Don't try to grow this stuff from seeds because actually the seeds aren't very viable. This prefers to spread by the roots. Um, the starter plants, California Seed Company, I'm putting a pitch in here. They sell two, two strains. There's a regular strain, and then there's a slightly more expensive strain, the shamanic strain. Go with the more expensive one because it spreads a little faster, well, quite a bit faster than the regular strain, and it still smells just as nice. All right, well, it's about time for me to start my day. Um, it's not 10 o'clock yet, ready for the gates to open, but there's always stuff to be done here prior to opening. I have to prepare my one-wheeled assault vehicle there. That's how I check on the trails if I'm working alone and I have to zip down to the beach to make sure people aren't doing things they shouldn't be doing. I hop on that and it's a lot faster than walking. I can actually go about 10 miles an hour on the trails on that. My parking lot beast, um, Black Lightning, my old beach cruiser, the very first thing ever that I bought with a credit card. <laughs> In that case, I can say the credit card was okay because I actually have something to show for it after like 30 years. Have a good day. Thank you for watching. And definitely do not be afraid to make bows. Do not be afraid to send you back. And definitely, even if the bow is not send you back, play around with this stuff. Sand it thin. Dip it. Wrap it around. String your bow. Add pressure to the string. And you're going to get an amazing and amazing um, result. Let's see close up here. This is so cool. I love the colors. I love the textures. This is going to be um, done back again with a rattlesnake hide. Very nice. Very nice. Let's get the same. See, it's can hardly see it. So beautiful. And you wonder why I say that, like people involved in primitive archery our philosophers these are almost shamanic devices so, they have a good one everyone